hello guys welcome to another video in today's video i'm going to teach you how to design a nice wedding jota like this one here and we start right now subscribe and click on the bell so you won't miss any video okay, these are the resources i'll be using for this tutorial and the software we are using is corel draw x7 so if you are using any version higher or lower than this you have no problem because we are still on the same page just know the tools and you are all done i'll be using these pictures and these are the colors i'll be using because this happens to be the color this couple have choose for their wedding and these are the backgrounds i'll be using so the first thing i'm going to do is to set my size and the jota is an a5 jota so i'm going to set my size to a4 then divide the size into a5 that is 2a5 making one a4 just like this one and I'm going to set click here and click on a4 then click on landscape to make it look landscape then double click on rectangle to to create this shape here just like this and click on this edge drag it to the center till you see this notification that shows center that is center you right click before you leave the reason why i had to right click is because i want to duplicate the shape that is i'm telling my choreo draw that i want to drag this shape to this place and duplicate it to give me a5 so automatically i have a new shape here which is a5 and i also click on this other remember i still have my a4 because i created a face shape here so i'm going to hold this other side and drag it to the center this time around i'm not duplicating it because i have the shape already now i have two a5 if you don't understand the process you can simply create two a5 size and join the both of them together if you don't want to go through this process but for the main time i'm going to repeat this process again so i have to delete these two shapes i said first you click on this edge drag to the center till you get this notification that shows that you are at the center of your workspace then right click on your mouse before you leave to duplicate then click on the other a4 size and hold this direction and drag it to the center also now i have two a5 size so this happened to be my front and this happened to be my back remember the front of your design must always be at the right hand side while the back of your design must always be at the left hand side so i'm going to add my color to this shape that is i'm going to click using my color eye drop tool i'll click on my color eye drop tool pick this color that is i'm simply picking this color to fill it here once you click on the color your cursor changes to a a, a paint bucket then you can drop the color here to give that shape this uh, forest green color then remember in all my tutorials i like taking off outline and you by now you should know how to take off the outline of any shape that is right click on this place where you see x or you right click on this other side so i'm going to choose any one and right click here to take off the outline okay then i will use this picture which is the picture i'll be using for the front of the jutter and i will right click and pick it down here then you see this option where you click power clip inside but most people find it very difficult to go through this process so i prefer you go through this other process i will go back and start over again okay right click on the picture you want to power clip and simply click on power clip inside and you see your cursor changes to this arrow then click on the shape where you want to power clip the picture you can see the picture automatically goes into the shape and someone once asked me why i like power clipping my pictures into a shape the reason why i power clip pictures is because when working with my design i keep 
I keep text on top of a shape and pictures should be inside the power clip because I don't want my pictures to be shifted or look as if I'm working with too much elements on top of the design. So I send some elements inside the shape and only my text will be outside the shape. So that is one thing. But you know, most people have their own pattern of designing. But in this case, I power clip pictures inside the shape and I allow my text to be outside the shape. Also, Another reason why I power clip pictures is because when you power clip your picture, you can enlarge and edges of your picture can cut out of the shape and it will not disturb your design. But most times people allow their picture to be there and it makes it very hard for you to trim the edges of your picture when your picture is on top of a shape. So let's go back to our design. So I won't waste much of your time. Okay. I'm going to press alternate on my keyboard and click on this picture here automatically i have been able to select the picture inside the shape so i press shift on my keyboard and enlarge the picture remember there are techniques of enlarging pictures you don't drag pictures from here 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 and here you enlarge pictures with these edges like this or this or here and lastly here so that is the techniques I've been using for years to enlarge my pictures. Reason being, you don't want to distort your pictures and no one ever wants to, to distort his or her pictures. So when enlarging your pictures, be careful the way you resize them so you won't distort the picture. Okay, I'm going to enlarge it like this. And as you can see, the picture seems as if it's bending to one corner. You know, as a designer, you have to have this visual, this uh, eye for good things, to eye that detects things that are not straight. So you can, so you can easily detect items or elements in your design that are not straight, and you resize them. So the way I'm looking at the picture is as if they are bending to one direction. So I have to rotate the image till it stands straight and i'm going to click again remember we are still selecting this picture inside the power clip so clicking on the picture again will turn the edges of your uh, picture to this where you have this curve edges like this so i have to hold any of the curve edges and rotate the image till it becomes straight just like this uh, I've lost the selections. I have to select the picture again. I will click on alternate and click click again till you get the edges like that. As you can see, the pictures are beginning to be straight. The image is straight now. So I can leave it at this point while I adjust again. Okay. And I have to position my image very well because I like images that are large but not too large in this case i want the picture to be centralized because the both couple are facing the front of the camera so i would like to centralize the boat okay enlarge it just this way and i think i'm okay now when designing this type of jota take note that your pictures should be inside and there should be space at the edges just like what you can see on the screen the pictures are centralized and the edges the space from the picture to the edge is almost the same with the left and right and most times if the job is going to be a spiral binding the the punch holes will be on the left of the front cover and it will be on the right of the front cover so be careful when designing this and i'm going to show you example of what i'm talking about what i'm trying to say is this if i should take my ruler to this place this is my imagination when you want to design for print imagine how your job will look like at the end of every printing for me i imagine that the punch holes will come here and it won't affect much of the picture except the hand of this cloth it won't affect the picture itself while this other side the punch holes can't come here because the punch holes always come at the left of the front cover and at the right of the back cover so i kept space here and the space is for trim marks 
so in case of anything or folding or any other stuff it won't affect my picture and likewise the spaces at the edges are the same so i proceed i like to transparent the down parts of my picture and a simple way i'm going to do this is to click alternate on my keyboard and click on the image then you click on transparency tool then you see these options here where you can click on uniform transparency um fountain transparency and every other stuff but the one i'll be working with is the fountain transparency so i'll click on fountain transparency then you see this effect on the picture i'm going to click on the white part now what this transparency is trying to say is this the white means it reveals the black means it hides so wherever the black that is this is black and this is white so wherever the black shows is where it's hidden and the white reveals so part of the picture will be hidden and parts will be revealed then this is where i want to hide and this is where i want to review so i have been able to review this other side and i've hidden this other side so pressing shift on your keyboard while editing this will help you to be on a straight line and your fountain view will be straight so i think this is nice for me this is okay now as i'm designing this i know you may not be designing with this same picture but if you can learn the procedures of designing this particular jota it will help you to go a long way in your choreo draw training or your graphic design training it will help you in other jobs it may not be this particular wedding jota but it will really help you in other jobs if you know these techniques the effects i use the color combo i use the feel i use and the way i arrange elements in my design it will really help you in your own design so let's move on okay i'll edit my feel this way i don't want to hide more of this man's hand so i'm going to review parts of his hand like this and i'll take the pictures upwards a little because i still have to reserve space for their names and there is one particular thing i want us to learn which is this i want to add a little glow around the image i know many people think this uh, effect is done only in photoshop but i'm going to show you how to do it with corel draw um click on your shadow to that drop shadow to and drop a shadow just like this you can see the glow effect is out but it's really showing on the down part of the picture and this is because i have transparent the down part of this picture but we are going to get rid of that as soon as possible so i'm going to increase the transparency and reduce the feathers till it's okay the way i want it to be um i think i'm okay with this okay okay i think this is very very perfect so to get rid of this here before then i want to change the color of that to this now i made mention of the couple wedding color which is the four colors you can see on the screen so anything i'm doing on this jota i'm working with these colors thank god so much they have a perfect color combo which i myself i can work with it but you know most wedding jota designs they have their color and the color do not match at all all i do in such wedding that have colors that do not match on design all i do is to pick one of their best color and look for other colors that rhymes with their color and work with but in this case their colors are okay so i can work with their color combo for the wedding ceremony or any stuff like that so i open my power clip are you surprised i opened the power clip so fast i'll close it and open again now what i did was to press ctrl on my keyboard and click on the shape 
once you press control on your keyboard and click on the shape where you power clipped a picture inside it's very easy to open it but most people find it so hard so they go through the long way and a longer way of doing that is right click on the image and click on edit power clip but for me i see it as a waste of time so i'll simply press control on my keyboard and click on the shape then my power clip is open then all i'm going to do now is to break this shadow remember we created a shadow i want to break this shadow because i don't want this shadow to be with this image because i want to give the shadow another color normally i would have clicked here and choose the color i want for the shadow so it changes just like what you can see on the screen but for the fact that i have to transparent this down part of the shadow also so i have to break the shadow apart you have to activate your shadow before you break the shadow so i'll click on shadow and just do a little editing like this once you see this clay drop once you see this symbol here clay drop shadow it means your shadow is activated automatically so click on object and you see break drop shadow group apart and you click here that's the long cut and the shortcut is ctrl k simply clicking ctrl k on your keyboard breaks the shadow so you don't have to stress yourself going the long way if you've not learned anything from this tutorial learn that ctrl k can break shadow apart and also break contour and break text break anything apart ctrl k can do that for you okay so i'm going to select my shadow this is what i'm talking about my shadow is out my picture is alone so before then i'll give my shadow this orange color because it's part of the couple's color and i'm going to convert the shadow to bitmap because i want to work on the shadow now if i apply transparency to the shadow originally it will look very bad so i prefer converting the shadow to bitmap before i apply transparency then click on transparency tool and click on fountain transparency if you can't go through that long process simply okay let me go back then simply click on transparency tool and click and drag down here to transparent that place as you can see i've been able to get rid of that shadow that dropped down the picture you can see now it looks so nice and the edge of the picture has that shiny orange stuff like that you can see the picture looks bad there but we can go with it for the sake of learning okay the next thing i'm going to do is to power clip another picture so i'll simply right click on the picture power clip inside click on that same shape i want to make a special effect for this so i'm going to enlarge this picture like this and send it upwards it's a very nice wedding design idea you can apply it on your next project and tell me if you are enjoying this tutorial if you are enjoying it give this video a thumbs up and share this video thank you okay we continue click on transparency tool and when you click on transparency tool you see this uh, icons here and you want to click on match mode so you can see all the effects that is under match mode you click on overlay once you click on overlay you can see the effect that is applied on the picture remember the effect i'm applying is affecting only the picture inside the power clip and i sent the picture behind the main picture i believe before now you know how to send pictures behind by pressing ctrl page down on your keyboard then you send the picture behind and effect this by giving it overlay now you can see the effect on it click on uniform transparency then increase the transparency till the picture fades into the background i don't want the picture to pronounce all that so i'll just fade the picture into the background while i'm still enlarging this 
you know when designing a wedding jetta just be careful with the front of your jetta even if you waste more time designing the front of the jetta it's better than just rushing up over things and designing trash so take time on the front part of your jetta then the back can be anything else so i take more time to design the front part of any jetta design i'm into so let's go back to our tutorial fountain transparency i think it will do a lot good work for me why i choose fountain transparency is because the, i don't want the sharp edge under this image the picture behind has a sharp edge under so i don't want it to pronounce i'm going to take it that way so i hide the down part till we come up to this level where it's covered okay well done and the next thing i'm going to do is to take this background this background i already ap applied the transparent effect on this image but there's no big deal i'll take this here and convert to overlay click on transparency click on match mode and click on overlay to apply that transparency effect then you can enlarge this ring like this till it fits you and click on uniform transparency to hide the ring a little then you can reduce the transparency here to review the ring till it reaches your test for me i think i'm okay with that and i'm going to reduce this a little all right it's perfect now i'm still working on the front I'm going to take this how do i call this should i call it a ornament should i call it a a resource but let me use the word ornament for this it's okay this floral ornament if you like this ornament let me know down the comment then i will send it for you free you just have to send me your details i send it direct to you maybe on whatsapp or you send me your gmail account i will send this ornament to you you can use it on your wedding design project okay i'm going to reduce this and fix here i've already arranged everything here the date of the wedding and all that stuff don't mind the date it's passed but i just have to use that date for the sake of this tutorial okay i have to play with my colors here so i don't have to use one color so i'll pick this color here with my eyedrop tool and apply it here and also apply it on this other like this and i believe this is perfect here okay now I'm almost done with the front. I have to give this design, um, I have to give the couple's name. So I'll click on interactive field tool and the shortcut key for interactive field tool is G. So simply clicking on G on your keyboard activates the interactive field tool. So click and drag and I have white down here. I prefer white there. So I'm going to take it upwards and it's activated then i'll type the couple names here all right this is the couple names and i'm going to type and here okay i'll change the typeface to dead star the typeface I'll be using for the couple names is Death Star. I know the typeface name sounds bad for this couple, but you like the typeface so well. Okay, Death Star. And this is it. It looks bold and at the same time, it's interesting. And I like using that word interesting typeface. Any typeface I love using so much, I regard that typeface as an interesting 
typeface that's for me i don't know for you okay or uh, enlarge this and take it up to this position where i place it here and i'll change the color to this green we have been using for a long time that is the one on the background the same color on the background the same color i'm using on the name so how you apply this effect on the name right click on this background and take it here then you see these options power clip inside so i'm power clipping that background inside the the text and you get something like this and i'll convert this to overlay so click on transparency to click on match mode and click on overlay then click on uniform transparency and it hides this and i'm going to reduce this little um okay i think it's perfect then i'll right click on white to give this text a white outline and i'm going to double click here on this hairline symbol so you get this dialog box where you can set how you want your outline to look like click on the outline width and set it to 1.5 yeah i think 1.5 is perfect then i'm going to click on um drop shadow tool and drop a shadow here just like this that's perfect all right i don't have to do much about that again okay and i'm going to create a circle here something just came on my head i have to expand this text a little so i'll use the shape tool to adjust the spacing of the letters just like this you can see it's at first it was jam-packed so now it's spaced okay i'm going to change this to this color and enlarge this guess what will be here i'll take this here and i'll change my typeface to gisha <laughs> okay the next thing i'm going to do is to bring out this and symbol to the front and the best way to bring element or object in your design to the top is by pressing control page up so i'll simply click control page up on my keyboard and here it comes up okay so i'm going to adjust this and enlarge it till it fits the circle just like this okay now there is one thing i'm missing and i want to fix that right now uh, i think i should add black color here okay then i will create a circle like this press ctrl while creating this circle so you maintain a accurate circle because if you leave your control this is a distorted circle you will get and you end up having an overall shape or something but if you click on control you have you have a normal circle yeah then take it to this place and press shift and reduce it this way pressing shift help you to reduce your circle equally on the four side then right click before you leave to duplicate the circle so i now have two circles i'll give this first circle this color and the next circle white color then i'll right click and take off the outline of the both circles just like this just like that okay you can reduce this circle a little till this point okay and i'm going to power clip this ring there reduce this this way and now it's done All I'll do is to select all the elements down here, press shift on my keyboard, click on my shape and centralize so I can have my text centralized 
there now i'm going to preview this front design so you see how it looks like just that you can see the front part of our design is done and perfect then i move on to the back side I give it the same color again and i proceed and this is what i'm going to do i want to create this um gallery this circle gallery that i will place all the pictures into it and i will make it uh, nice the display will be nice let's just create something here with circles i know most designers find it so difficult to create this stuff but i'm going to show you a simple way i know many experts of corel draw have many ways to create this but in my own way i'm going to show you how to create it simply using circles okay let's start press ctrl and create this circle after clicking on your elliptical tool which is this tool here or the shortcut key to get that tool so easily is f7 on your keyboard so simply clicking f7 will activate the elliptical tool then i'm going to give that a white color and right click to take off the outline then i'm going to reduce this to give it another circle that is reduce right click before you leave to get two circles so now i have two circles and on the second circle on the top i'll right click on this orange color to give it an orange outline then i'll increase the the width of the outline to 1.5 or i can further enlarge it to 2.0 points so that is for that and the next thing i'm going to do is to reduce it again to this point so i have this then i'll use my pen tool to create something like this it's very simple okay then here i can just manipulate this this way because i'm not interested in that side this is where i really want my shape to be i'll take this to this extreme again it all depends on what i want so i'm going to duplicate this right click before you leave and click on mirror vertically so you can mirror it this way okay I think I should also mirror horizontally and take it till it centralizes with the first shape up there. Then take notes and if you don't understand the way I created this stuff, I can't go back and start again. All I want you to do is to keep on watching this part of the video till you understand what i did here and that's why i'm very very slow so you understand what i'm doing using my pen tool again i now create another shape now even if this shape overlaps this other shape i'm going to show you the secrets behind all this why i'm doing it this way join here and also create another shape overlap this shape like this and join here okay let's unveil the whole secret about this stuff now clicking on this shape i press shift and click on this other shape also and i'll give it let me give it a random color and uh, 10 percent black and the outline width to 2.0 then i can give it a orange outline with just like the first outline then right click and click on power clip inside then click on this circle shape here uh, okay sorry now i have a challenge which is i have covered the second circle which we created so i'm going to shift this backward so i can select this is the circle i want to select let me give it a color so you know that's the circle i want to select the circle with that yellow color that's the circle i want to power clip inside so i'm going to select them again right click power clip inside then click on the circle then automatically it has gone inside you can see how nice it is then i cannot bring this in again 
so at this point i want to power clip this one also this uh shape i created again i'll give this one another random color like that and right click power clip inside and click on that same circle just like this so i'll you select the both of them inside the power clip press alternate to select once you select an object inside the power clip automatically you have the right to select every other object inside that same power clip so as i've selected the first one i will click on shift and select the second uh, magenta colored shape then i'll press ctrl page down to send it to the back why am i sending it to the back because i want this shape because the edges of the shape were not straight so i'm sending it behind the edge of a shape that was straight so now you have this nice login uh, template where i can power clip my pictures i'll show you what i want to do with this stuff now let me open my power clip so we can explore more and see what is really inside the power clip and let's click on edit power clip now you can see i have been able to hide the distorted parts of these shapes inside the circle and i use these other shapes with a straight line to cover these two shapes that were not straight that was why i said don't bother creating a straight line the only one you should create straight lines it should be this and this while these two can be behind it then i close my power clip and this is another shape on top i use this other shape to cover my rough work there so control z and now this is what i've got now the only thing i'm going to do is if you like this shape i'm going to link up this shape on this video's description so you can download it for free and use it for any of your design you don't bother creating this anymore just lift it and power clip your pictures inside it and off you go so i'm going to power clip my pictures First, I'll power clip this one outside here. I've always told you the long cut and the short cut of power clip them yeah, of power clipping pictures. So I will right click, click on power clip inside and click here. Then open power clip. Uh, this is my picture. So I'll enlarge it. And edit the picture the way i want it to be i think this position is nice for now let me close my power clip so i can edit more i'm going to take this circle shape upwards enlarge it press ctrl g press shift click here and press c then this is done okay i, think I can still enlarge more of this i think i can still enlarge more of this okay it's fine and i'll take this upwards a little and i would like to feature the same ring background here again i use alternate to open this up by clicking alternate click on the ring i can copy that same ring and power clip it inside here just like this Okay, that's the nice look there so the next thing I'm going to do is to start placing my pictures here power clip inside the circles which was created here power clip the first picture and I'll power clip this here and I'll power clip this here remember I'm power clipping the pictures into the second large circle so let's not bother explaining things here and i'll open my power clip press ctrl click on the second shape to open the power clip you can see the four pictures now the four pictures are going into this power clip so i'll click on the first picture okay right click power clip inside power clip on this first shape click on this other one right click power clip inside power clip on this other shape click here right click power clip inside right click power clip inside 
and that's all so i'm going to adjust the power clip to fit those shapes enlarge it this way okay this one is okay and this other one remember all we are interested in uh these empty spaces around this so i'm going to position the picture in a nice place and you can see this place do not look nice at all so all i'm going to do is to enlarge the picture to cover up the down part like that while the up part i can fill it with this particular wall here this place so i'm going to duplicate this picture by pressing ctrl d and shift it up till i use that wall then press ctrl page down to send it to the back you can see i've been able to cover that place there and okay i move to this other picture and edit it the same way and i'll click on my color eye drop tool to pick this color and fill it on the shape so you can see i've been able to cover up the upper part of this picture um it takes wisdom to work with this stuff um i observe that this picture do not really fit um on this particular shape so i'm going to take it out to this other shape because this is a landscape picture it really fits on this other landscape shape while this portrait picture will fit on the portrait shape so i'll take it up here and fix it here then click on color eye drop to click on this and click on the shape to pick the same color for that shape and if you can see there's a little uh, demarcation here which means the colors are not together so all i'm going to do is to open the picture and transparent this particular place here and that is done okay and i'm going to power clip this other picture here it fits that so well okay it fits everything i'm going to close my power clip close i'm going to close my power clip so this is a nice work done here but we are not done i'm going to create another thing here ah oh, i I have to shift this picture downwards a little so it shows their face there, okay i think this is okay let me open this up again and fill this color here okay that's i can work with this Okay, I think I can work with that. And I'll give this an orange color. Right click and press Ctrl page down so it comes to this. Where I click this, okay. And duplicate the circle, give it a white outline and enlarge it. The line width like this, okay your page down again to get this you can see how it goes then i'll type thanks for sharing in our joy okay and i'll use this typeface uh dead star press ctrl k let's adjust this thanks for sharing uh, let me change this for sharing to gisha and make it bold then place it here in our joy okay then i can convert all them to white okay i think i'm done i'm like i'm done with this design so i'll delete this color off. so this is what we have as the final look of our design let me know down in the comments if you love this design and 
you want to use it for your next project so i'm going to link up all the resources of this design on the video description and i'm going to link up everything that has to do with this design so you can redesign yours and i have a special surprise for you and guess what's this surprise this is actually what we have been designing right from time this is actually the final look you can see how the design looks like i have to show you this so you see it very well and this is the back what we have been creating and let me take this off so you see how it looks very well okay this is the final look Let me surprise you where we've not touched. This is how the inside looks like. And these are the punch holes, like I said. Be sure to keep spaces on the side of your design because of this punch hole. So it won't touch your pictures. And this is the spiral binding jetta. So you want to know how to design more of this. Kindly check back this channel and don't forget to subscribe because we do lots of graphic design tutorials. We help graphic designers find success in their career. So thank you so much for watching this video. I will see you next time.